What's up guys? Today we're going to talk about pipes in Linux. Pipes allows you to use the output of one program as the input of another program. And the pipe key looks just like this. It's the vertical bar that's going up and down. This key should be located above the enter key if you're using a standard US keyboard. And you'll also have to hold shift while you press it because typically the primary function of this key is a backslash. Now, typically, whenever you type in a command at your terminal, the output or the result of whatever command you just ran will typically be sent to standard output, which is just this text that's in the terminal screen here. So if I were to do ls, for example, this will, of course, print out everything that is in my current directory, which is user bin. Now, I went to this directory for a particular reason because it has quite a lot of things in this directory. You see that it's pretty messy. There's all of this stuff all over the place. But what I could do is pipe the result of ls, everything that you see here, into a program that's meant to assist us with reading such as less. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for you. ls pipe into less. And actually I'm gonna do the raw formatting for less because it's still a little bit messy when I do it that way. All right, so now you can see that I have successfully piped everything into less. So this is the less command that lets you read uh, usually text from a file, but instead of taking the input as text from a file, we just directed the output from our ls command into here so that we're able to see all of the individual programs that I have in my user bin folder without having to scroll through in the terminal standard output in just a really annoying way. A much more common use of pipes is to pipe output into grep. So I can do the same thing with my ls command. And let's say that I want to grep everything that has the word vim inside of it. So I want to see pretty much just different programs that have to do with Vim. This is probably gonna print out like Vim, Vim diff, and uh, maybe NeoVim, because I think I have both Vim and NeoVim installed on my system. And yep, I was right. So you see this printed out all of the different programs that I have on my system that have the word Vim inside of their name. Now, another common pipe is to pipe into unique. So I'm gonna go ahead and change directories here to where I have my example file. And let's see, so I have this file called sortthese.txt. And you can see inside of them, it's basically just like made up grades. So you have names in this column, you have the classes in this column, and then you have the grade that the student got in this column. Now, what the unique command does, because I don't think I've mentioned that before, is it will remove any duplicates that you have in a file. But the unique command by itself is not very powerful because if you look carefully at the file that I've made here, there are duplicates. Like I have Kenny on here twice, and I think I have Donnie on here twice, and I have Ryan on here twice. But they're not duplicated one after the other. They're, you know, they skip a few lines before you have the duplicate line. So if I were to do unique on sort these, it gives us the same output because it's not able to identify them when they're on different lines. But a way that I can get around this pretty cleverly is to use the sort command and then pipe the output of it into unique. So sort, I know I've showed you guys in a previous video, will 
put everything in alphabetical order. So now the two Donnies are together, the two Kennys are together, and the two Ryans are together. And I can pipe this into Unique. And now you see Unique was able to successfully remove all of the duplicate uh, instances of these grades. And I can even send the output from Unique into a new file if I want. So we'll call that sorted.txt. And then you see sorted.txt now has the contents of this output from our piped command. So I'm gonna show you guys one last example of it because I could show you guys pipes all day long. There is many different and interesting tricks that you can do with it, but I just want this to be a basic introduction to pipes and let you go off on your own and discover ways to use pipes in your environment. So the next thing I'll do is a pipe into Vim because Vim is a little bit different when you're sending standard output into it. So you might think that to output this, for example, so this is the help flag for LS. We might wanna send this into Vim so that we can make notes for ourselves on all of these different options if we're trying to learn how to use LS better. But if I follow the typical syntax that I've been doing, you see that we get this warning and our screen flashes and basically it doesn't do what we wanted it to do. So I wanted to show you for Vim because when you want to pipe something into Vim, you have to put a hyphen at the end of it in order for Vim to be able to read it properly. So now I do this ls help pipe it into Vim with my hyphen. And now you see the output of ls help is now open inside of a Vim file. And I can go ahead and I can edit this. You know, if I wanted to put any notes to help me better understand these command switches, um, you know, maybe you would put something that starts with D as like a little mnemonic thing to help you remember it. You can now do all that. And then of course, when you're ready to right quit it, you can create a new file name and then you'll have all of those notes for you to assist you with your learning. So this has been how to use pipes in Linux. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, be sure to leave it a like and share it with a friend who you think would find this useful.